Sara? Yes. Okay, now. Okay. Now we're live. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, good morning, mm -hmm. good afternoon, and good evening. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the official launch of the Women in Tech Afghanistan chapter. Women in Tech Afghanistan chapter is an official chapter of Women in Tech Global and International global which is an international non-profit organization on a mission to close the gender digital divide and to help women embrace technology uh, we promote girls and women's empowerment around the world with a focus on sustainable development goal 5b which is enhance the use of enabling technology in particular ict to promote the empowerment of women my name is Zahra Nazari, and I am ambassador for the Afghanistan chapter. In today's event, first I will give, I will have a brief statement. Then uh, Ms. Ayume Mori Oke will officially launch, uh, will officially integrate the Women in Tech Afghanistan chapter. And next we will have a keynote speaker, Professor Lale Behjad, and uh, then my colleagues Nuria and Shabana. Uh, they will introduce the Afghanistan chapter in detail, and at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. Can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, the gender digital divide is a phenomenon that has emerged after digitalization. Although digital technologies are omnipresent and many areas of our life, most public and private services are, are delivered to the technologies, groups of people, particularly women, unequally uh, benefit from these opportunities. The gender digital divide and STEM gap globally exists and get worse when it comes to developing countries like Afghanistan. This figure, which is provided by ITU, uh, shows that globally girls are not interested or do not have enough confidence to, uh, to enroll in STEM and ICD, and they still believe technology is a male domain. This figure also shows, uh, defines how girls underestimate their abilities in mathematics. In general, the number of doc uh, doctoral degrees in STEM, in STEM, uh, STEM discipline uh, earned by women increased in, uh, during the past four decades, but still remains a small proportion of the total. There is also a gender gap in terms of using the internet and women are not equally benefiting from the internet. Um, definitely when women are not benefiting from internet, they don't have access to social media as well. Uh, these figures clearly show that the gender digital divide exists all around the world and how urgent it is to take action to bridge this gap uh, that will have a a significant impact on gender equality as well as the global GDP. According to the Afghanistan National Statistics and Information Authority and the UNDP, more than 60% of the population is below 25 years old. They can hugely affect the figure, the future economy if they uh, receive a quality education. Women make up 50% of this young population, but face several barriers to education, internet use, and digital technologies in Afghanistan. Most girls do not go to a school, and the literacy rate for women is among the lowest in the world, which is why the gender digital divide is vast in Afghanistan. Ethnographic studies show the most least developed countries like Afghanistan uh, often deter developing women's, uh, women and girls' digital skills. Most women do not have the fi 
financial independence to purchase digital technology or pay for an, an internet connection. Internet access, uh, if available, may also be controlled by um, and monitored by men in the family, and women have only the right to access a limited set of content. And here you can see the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, around 49% of the population are female in Afghanistan, 39% of the students are also girls, 29% of uh, college students also are girls in Afghanistan, and uh, in the labor force, 22% of them are female, and around 5% of uh, women are working or studying in STEM. These figures are uh, before Taliban, but now they are banned from working and also going to school or universities. The problems I mentioned in the first slide can be multiplied when it comes in Afghanistan. Afghanistan still faces significant challenges in, uh, in achieving women's rights and gender inequality are far beyond imagination in this, part, in this country, particularly in the Taliban era. Most Afghan girls do not have access to education and literacy rate for women is among the lowest in the world. The gender inequality index is 0.6, ranking Afghanistan 157 out of uh, 162 countries, uh, which makes it one of the least favorable countries for women. To summarize the main challenges against uh, gender digital divide, gender digital equality in Afghanistan, we can separate them to two categories. In general, uh, inequality and education, uh, inequality in education and professional opportunities, structural inequalities, entrenched stereotypes, biased cultural and social norms, and concern for online safety. But after Taliban, uh, due to uh, policies and uh, legislations, primary and higher education are banned for girls, and, uh, for girls and women in Afghanistan, and all women are banned from any type of employment. But uh, if we can bridge the gender digital divide in Afghanistan, in terms of uh, development, Afghanistan could experience a leapfrogging process toward development, and also could leverage new technologies for long standing challenges, including effective healthcare, education, polit political participation, and civil rights, and also could increase economic output by an average of 35%. And the expected outcomes of bridging the gender digital divide uh, in terms of uh, gender equality, uh, we can have an increased number of female coders. We can have more digitally educated women to online learning platforms, increased digital content developed by Afghan women, more employable women, uh, social engaged and active women, and also more digital trades or e-commerce platforms. Uh, so uh, in this uh, situation, uh, NGOs and international women's rights organizations can have uh, significant roles in Afghanistan. And because of that, in July 22, I just asked a woman in tech global uh, organization to open up a chapter for Afghanistan. And I sent my email and I sent this video to convenience the board members of the uh, women in tech global. And uh, fortunately, they accepted my request and now we are launching the Women in Tech Afghanistan. So I would just like, I, I would love to thank uh, Women in Tech Global, Ayumi, Andrea, Nadia, and Tamuna, and also Professor Petra Musli from University of Alberta and Professor Lale Behjad uh, from University of Calgary. Now I would love to uh, invite Ms. Ayumi to uh, officially inaugurate, inaugurate, inaugurate the Afghanistan chapter. Um, Ayumi uh, is the CEO and founder of the Women in Tech Global, 
and she is a social entrepreneur committed to driving positive, sustainable change through technology. And also, she is a member of Forbes Business Council. She sits in the supervisory board of Autofill, a deep tech meets hard tech, tech company, revolutionizing uh, object uh, inspections with an initial focus on the automotive and uh, rail industries. Uh, it's great honor to have you today, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Zara. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the official launch of the Women in Tech Afghanistan. I'm really delighted for you all to be participating in this event. Obviously, it's going to be online, but I'm sure that many of you have been connected from around the globe because we want to be able to address the Women in Tech Afghanistan community, not only in, within the country, but also outside the country, everywhere around the world. Um, so my deepest gratitude goes to you, our local team lead, Zara Nazari, our chapter investor, um, who made this possible. Uh, I want to thank you like personally and with heartfelt thanks for officially expanding Women in Tech to Afghanistan and for your commitment to women and girls empowerment and education in STEM. For years, Afghanistan has been the center of conflict and struggles, and women have been among the most marginalized groups in the country. We women have faced you know, severe challenges in education, health, economic opportunities, and basic human rights, including freedom of movement and our access to education. I think we have to highlight that preventing women access to education is a very tragic violation to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, where everyone has right to education. And this recognition is the foundation of freedom, of peace and justice in the world. And it's up to all of us to fight for it in the name of the human family. I think that in our lifetimes, we have seen enormous advances in the status of women, yet women and girls will still remain the first target of victims of barbarous acts. And these fundamental rights that we, our mothers, our grandmothers, we fought so hard to obtain, they remain so fragile. And there is this quote that I like sharing every time because it's so up to date um, on what's happening in the world. It comes from Simone de Beauvoir, who's a French uh, philosopher and writer. And she says that never forget that it only takes one political, economic or religious crisis for women's rights to be called into question. And these rights can never be taken for granted. We, remain, we must remain vigilant throughout our lives. So Women in Tech, why Women in Tech? Women in Tech, in 2018, I created Women in Tech not only as an organization, but really as a call to action. We promote women's and girls' empowerment around the world with a focus on sustainable development goal 5B, harnessing technologies. And this bold vision is what has united our movement across the boundaries of geography, of status, and culture. Because women in tech, we're not just a network. You know, we are one of the world's leading organizations for supporting women in STEM. And we're committed to driving and to measuring our impact. And thanks to our team, women in tech, we have already impacted a quarter of a million people. So 25,000 women have gone through our educational programs. 250 computers were donated to students in India, Brazil, South Africa, and now in Burundi. We opened a learning center in townships in Cape Town, in Rio, and Burundi. Over 2,000 mentors and mentees have been paired, and 230,000 people have taken part in our events. Our four main pillars for women in tech are education, business, digital inclusion, and advocacy. And our mission is to empower 5 million women and girls in STEM by 2030. And so we do this through a number of programs and services. So we have the Women in Tech Academy that's going to be launching soon, offering training with skilling courses that go from coding 101 to blockchain or software engineer. We're also going to be soon launching this very new platform uh, where we're going to have uh, also crowdfunding, crowd lending, venture builder. Um, we're going to be carrying on with events. We already have our talent hub and we're going to have so much more to offer our community. I'm so pleased that today, the community of Afghanistan will also be able to benefit from all of these tools. Our goal is really to give women the tools and the opportunities for them to thrive, for them to learn, for them to invest, for them to connect, to network and to grow, right? I also want to welcome and to invite those who can come um, to, 
those that are you know not in the country or around the country can come out to Paris this coming May on the 22nd and 23rd. We're going to be hosting our second Women in Tech Global Summit in Paris. It's going to be a two-day event bringing together delegations from across the world. And I think it would be so important to have um, women in Afghanistan represented as well. Our line of speakers is on fire. We've got presidents, ministers have confirmed their attendance, and we couldn't be more excited to share our three-year roadmap. So we have 45 chapters today, and we're going to be growing to 100 chapters with a community of 1 million members by the end of 2025. We are part of the Edison Alliance, which is um, powered by the World Economic Forum. And we have this project and this vision of impacting 1 billion lives by 2025. And we have committed to 1 million lives by 2025 in education. So I look forward to working hand in hand with the African chapter, and I am confident that it will become a driving force for women in and out of the country, empowering positive action and driving meaningful change. Because when women rise, we all rise. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ayumi, for supporting Afghan women and also Afghanistan chapter. Next, I would love to invite Professor Lale Behjad. She is a professor of engineering at the University of Calgary in Alberta, Canada. Her research mainly focuses on developing various electronic uh, design automation, EDA techniques for physical design, large scale uh, optimization for EDA, as well as engineering education. Lale is the chair for women in science and engineering careers region in the Natural uh, Science and Engineering Research Council of Canada and works on developing inclusive culture in the STEM fields. Uh, Lola John, it's great, to uh, it's great to have you today as our uh, keynote speaker and the floor is yours. Zahra, thank you so much for inviting me and congratulations on this big achievement. And Ayumi, thank you so much for your uh, inspiring words. And uh, also greetings to everyone, seeing everyone from around the world is fantastic. I'm trying to share my screen and I'm just going to try one more time. And if not, uh, just give me one second. So, no. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So um, I thought I will put this uh, talk more on the basis of how we can build a better future together. And uh, so I'm just going to first acknowledge that I live in Canada and Canada has been uh, built on the native land of the indigenous people who first live in Canada. And as part of the reconciliation, I would like to acknowledge that in Canada, I live, work and play on the traditional territories of all the people from the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksikai, the Ghana, the Pikani, the Sutina, the Nakoda Nation and Métis Nation Region 3. So as uh, Zahra uh, kindly introduced me, I'm uh, Lale. I'm a professor in electrical and software engineering. I'm also the uh, chair for women in science and engineering. And in that capacity, my job is to promote uh, women uh, in science and engineering in the, and the remove systemic barriers that exist in their paths. My program is called Wise Planet, and I would really encourage everyone who would like to, to have visit our website on uh, that. A little bit about uh, myself. I'm also a, a mother of three children. My children are much older now, but they looked cuter when they were younger. So I put a picture of them there. Um, I'm a professor and uh, I teach a lot of uh, students. I'm also an immigrant from Iran originally. So that's a picture of me and my high school uh, friends in, uh, um, in Iran. And uh, as Zahra mentioned, I work on uh, building computers. So I develop software to automatically make computer hardware. So if I'm very successful, I won't have a job in 10 years. So I'm sort of wishing to be successful and not successful, but we'll see. And above all, I'm also a feminist um, and trying to raise everyone's participation. Uh, women of Afghanistan have been very dear to my heart, but also they are a future of not just Afghanistan, but also the world. And there is very good reasons for that, because they are the ones who have been able to overcome the most amount of difficulties, and uh, they will be the ones who will lead the future. 
And this is also really, really important with the things that um, we will see because they have been removed from all sources of uh, things that, that opportunities that they could have been for them. This is a picture of women protesting outside the university in Kabul. So uh, women have been uh, basically, uh, not only in Afghanistan, but uh, all around the world have been taken out of the systems of power. And I like this quote from uh, Dr. Mary Baird. She's a historian and works on sort of a classic history, but she also talks about systems of power. And one of the things she says is, if women aren't perceived to be fully within the structures of power, it is power that needs to be redefined rather than the women. And I think one of the things that Zahra mentioned about the UN Sustainable Development Goals, um, which is the, a lot of them are actually goes back to education, gender equality, um, and uh, so on. A lot of those uh, sustainable development goals are things that we would like to achieve for uh, making women, changing the systems of power, structures of power, and having women on uh, equitable and equal footing as men in the systems of power. Um, now, this is a really hard work, and I think this is something we all need to think about. But for women in tech, this is actually one of the things that is going to happen, and we will be the ones who will have the highest power to change things. And the reason for that is there's three major changes that are coming our way. Uh, the first one is climate crisis, and climate crises are going to change all of our environment and how we interact with our environment. So the things we do with our environment and the things we can do or the way we exploit some of these things, they all need to be changed. So this is the first change. The second change that we uh, we are thinking of, uh, we have, I'm talking about the major change is artificial intelligence or the digital revolution that's happening. I don't know if anybody has been paying attention, but chat GPT has just suddenly exploded and changed the, the way everybody does uh, thinks about education now and what should we actually teach to our education. And the third one is biotechnology and what we are going to be able to do with our bodies, how we can actually uh, design things to uh, sort of enhance our senses, uh, our memory, and also our lifetime. And none of this will be able to happen without the, the technology that we are developing. And women in tech um, bring in a very, very interesting and uh, uh, diverse points of view and perspectives into the system. So they would be able to sort of solve some of the problems that have been traditionally overlooked in tech by bringing new perspectives, both about the, um, uh, the equity and the inclusivity of AI, uh, the changes that have women's body have from men's body, and then how we actually look at our environment and uh, uh, think about it. So there is a new dawn coming in the world. And this is a dawn of technology coming in and many changes. And the women in technology will be in the forefront of it. And especially women who bring in diverse perspectives like women from Afghanistan. But to be able to enable change, we also need opportunities. And this is where I'm going to ask you for a call to action in just a few minutes. Because generally, when we come from uh, these diverse backgrounds, there will be very few opportunities open to us. And we need to figure out where those opportunities are so that we are not just trying to keep up or to be able to get a seat, but we are actually able to make those changes that we want to make. So with this, I would like to talk about the buckets of opportunities. I think uh, my sort of a slide got a little bit uh, mixed up with the transfer. But imagine there are usually four buckets of opportunities in every uh, place you work in or every institutions or universities and so on. And this is how I felt when I first started my work. So the first bucket of opportunity is the golden bucket. It's the bucket with the best opportunities. And these are, and then the next one is the silver bucket and then bronze bucket. And then right at the end is this sort of a bucket of leftover opportunities. So the first bucket was usually taken by people who had, who were tall and could speak the language without an accent and um, studies and didn't have lots of 
other um, sort of uh, advantages or privileges. Now, I usually felt when I had asserted that when it got to me, I was basically scraping the bottom of the fourth bucket, this black bucket. And I was just trying to find an opportunity to show that I know things, I can do things, or I like, you know, I have some potential. And uh, by the time I took that a small little potential, I developed it, I put it out, somebody else will come and say, oh, this is a great opportunity and we'll give it to someone else. Because like, you know, I'm like, you know, you've been working on this for a while, so you can take a break and now go find another opportunity. So at some point I got tired of trying to figure out these opportunities and finding in and try to make them better. So I started making my own bucket. I called it like lolly bucket of opportunities. And I started uh, sort of trying to figure out things that nobody was looking at, I was looking at, and then I thought, okay, this is great, I can do this, and then suddenly it became sort of important. But the one thing about making your own bucket is that at that point I thought that I'm filling up my bucket, it's too many things for me to do. So I started giving them to other people. And um, those bucket grew because those people also brought in their own opportunities, things they see that needed to be done and nobody else was doing. And by just talking about it with one another, we were able to actually increase the opportunities for one another. And this is one of the reasons that I started my program. It's because I see many, many different people who have a potential for leadership and they just need a few opportunities in terms of training or in terms of support to be able to make those opportunities good for them. So I'm going to do uh, a little experiment, and I hope everybody can sort of join in into this. Um, I'm going to ta talk a little bit about how to make each other opportunities for one another. So I see lots of uh, fantastic people from across the world. I can see your comments here. So I'm going to ask you in a few minutes to put some stuff in the comments if you don't mind. So for you to be able to make opportunities for yourself and then finally make opportunities for others, you need a powerhouse circle of mentors or people around you. Uh, who are these people? These are the people you trust and you respect. So if you know someone, just ask them. If you don't know someone, hopefully by the end of this session today, you might not get to know someone or join Women in Tech to, to get to know them. Um, what should they have? They should also have a skin in the game. And that means that they should be invested in you and invested in women in tech. Um, you can meet them in a, as a group, one-on-one, -on -one, or like, you know, um, through emails and stuff like that. So anywhere you can make connections with them. It is much, much better if you meet your powerhouse people, your mentors or your circle as a scheduled work, and then you get some homework to do and then an agenda for the next meeting. This way, you everybody is accountable. And then so make sure you actually are, keep people are accountable and the, your, your work gets forward so you're not sort of forgotten. So if in the middle is you, you need four types of people, not four people, but four types of people. You need innovators, supporters, connectors, and champions. And I'm going to quickly talk about each one of them for you. So the supporters are people who support you. So if something is going wrong, someday you're feeling really down. You can go to someone, talk to them, and without any judgment, they will tell you that you are great, you can do this, and then you get to do this. So my mom is my biggest supporter. Whenever I'm feeling really, really down, I'll just uh, ask my mom and uh, I'll tell my mom and she's like, you can do this. Just take a good night's sleep, take care of yourself, and then tomorrow you will be able to do this. Uh, now, it doesn't always have to be your mom. Your mom might be also a person who judges you sometimes. So it could be anyone, a friend who you can just sort of, you know, at some point say, hey, can I just vent out? So those are the people you support, and these are the people who will pull you up when you need something, but they might not have a lot of other uh, things you do, but you need your supporters and keep them really, really close and dear to yourself. Oh, this one, I think I'm going to skip this because I don't think this will work on the platform, but um, the next one group is the innovators. And these are the people that if you have an idea, but the idea is not very well uh, developed, 
you can go to them and ask them to develop this idea with them and they would just sort of help you uh in, make this idea better so these are the people you say oh i have this like crazy idea what do you think and they don't say it crazy this is crazy don't do it they say zahra great idea start a chapter and maybe you want to invite you know have a launch of it and have it global and so on so those are the people who actually take your work to the next level then you have your champions and the champions are people who basically um, get you to, um, to sort of champion you and bring you up. So for example, uh, I when I first met Zahra, it was through uh, Dr. Pet Musilic, who just basically championed her and said, hey, I know this wonderful uh, researcher and I think you need to know her. And so, so that is how champions work. They just basically champion you put your name up for awards, put your name for like the next promotion or jobs and so on. And then finally, these are the connectors. And these are the people who connect uh, to connect you to different people. And then you can leverage that relationship. So they might not know you personally very well. They don't have to champion you. They just are the people who connect you to different people so, so that you can actually build a very, very good network. And this is where I want your, some, a brave volunteer on the comments to share something about yourself in the group chat. So this could be something about your professional work or something about your personal life or something like that. So, for example, um, I can start by sharing. I don't have access to how to put things in the chat. Um, but uh, so... I um, share something about myself that I have been apolitical all my life, but with all the things that's happening in Iran, uh, I think that I would like to become an activist for women's rights now. So if anybody else wants to share something um, in the chat, uh, that would be fantastic. Any brave souls? It could be about something about work. So I have been working on uh, reinforcement learning and it just has been very hard to figure out a very good reward uh, topic. Okay, Jesse is from Detroit, Michigan. Greetings. Um, so the, the second part of this, I hope that if someone else is from Michigan, please put it in the chat. So if you have something, comment. Okay, I have said who says is I'm a man. So please don't we don't disregard. Absolutely not. We love to have you. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So the, okay, wow, they're coming now. Thank you so much for putting it. Okay, so I think maybe we go with uh, Koi Ni Sola. I hope I said your name right. Uh, she's interested in taking a more active role in channels like Women in Tech. Does anybody else would like to have an active role in uh, women in chat, in in, uh, in technology? And so please um, put your, um, if you want to do that and what type of role you want, just sort of have that. Uh, the idea of this is once we find out uh, we have so many things in common with one another, we can actually start making those connections. So, for example, uh, I know that uh, some of you are also interested in the fight for women's rights. And so we can con contact uh, over there. Or if there is something about uh, male allies, I can talk with uh, Seth and uh, talk about the classes we have actually developed for programming or something like that, maybe set, we can connect together because I have some classes that are for teaching uh, programming and maybe we'll be happy to work with you on making it into a, um, 
a um, sort of a collaboration. Okay, I am gonna wait for, I'm gonna go forward and then see if uh, anybody else wants to put your ideas in the chat, that would be great. The idea is once we do this, we actually will make a full circle so people can actually help each other and um, and connect to, to one another through this uh, sort of exercise and be connected to one another. So just to conclude, um, make sure you have a, a circle of powerhouse advisory circle to help you in your career. And um, I would like to end with uh, two quotes from two of my favorite people. The first one is Margaret Heffern, and she's actually a tech entrepreneur. And she says, the only way to know the future is to make it. And what we all want, I'm sure, is to have a future that's equitable and just for all people. And so let's make it together, especially as women in tech, we know how to make things, and uh, especially with technology that's coming up. And then the second one is a quote from Angela Davis uh, that she's no longer accepting things that she cannot change. She's changing things that she cannot accept. And um, I would like to ask you to, to give a call to everyone to start changing things that you cannot accept. Thank you all. And with love and solidarity and for women, for life and for liberty, that's my talk. Uh, thank you very much, Lala Jan, for your great speech and a nice explanation and also beautiful examples. Thank you also for accepting our invitation to join this uh, event. And now I would like uh, to invite, uh, to ask my colleagues, Nuria Jan and Shavana Jan, to introduce our chapter. Nuria Jan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Zara Jan. Uh, Shabana John, would you be able to share the screen? But am I audible? Uh, yes, I will start sharing slides. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, hello again. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Wherever in the world you are. Uh, we are very thrilled and pleased to welcome you all today in our event. And um, it's so great to have so many people from around the world supporting us here. Um, yeah, can you move it? Yeah, so I think um, Dr. Zara discussed um, the uh, all these figures in very detail uh, at the beginning of the program. and. Um, I would like to only add, you know, including the current situation in Afghanistan. Um, so again, I'm not going to go into details about this, but there is there is no surprise to anyone that there is a gender imbalance uh, in Afghanistan in in tech as well as across the globe. Uh, but the gap, the mm, gender gap in Afghanistan, does not only began by you know, having it in education, but as well as having it uh, in in, um, in cultural stereotypes as well. So it's mostly, you know, fueled by gender and cultural stereotypes that we have all these gender imbalance, especially in tech in Afghanistan. And uh, as well as how male dominant the uh, Afghanistan society is. Uh, can you go ahead? Yeah. So I'm going to begin uh, actually by introducing the team members or the board members of the Women in Tech Afghanistan. And it gives me quite pleasure to be introducing all of these wonderful women in here. Um, I would like to actually start by sharing a little story here. Um, when I was giving my interview for the American University of Afghanistan, I was asked why uh, I want I want this job. Why I want to teach in American University of Afghanistan? And I had two um, answers here. One, I say because I grew up watching my mom teaching, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, Afghan girls, and she has been doing it for more than thirty years. So, you know, I watch her enjoy 
bringing or educating Af Afghan women. And I inherit that from her. And second was that my motivation is to stand in front of Afghan women and Afghan girls and tell them here, you know, here is your inspiration, basically. Look at your mentor, uh, me standing here, not as an, as an only technical person, but as someone who has had many leadership positions as well. So coming to Professor Lala's uh, comments about, you know, um, not only being um, uh, a supporter and a mentor, but the reason behind we uh, combined this team and, uh, you know, were open to the idea of the women in tech in Afghanistan was to actually bring all these amazing uh, members together and, you know, stand in front of the Afghan uh, woman and tell them, you know, this is here is your inspiration, basically. So uh, again, uh, let me start with um, Dr. Yeah, with Dr. Zara. Uh, so Dr. Zara Nazari is a, po uh, is a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Electrical and Computing Computer Engineering at the University of Alberta, Canada. She has a PhD in Intradisciplinary Intelligence Systems Engineering from the University of uh, Ryuko's Japan. Her main research areas were machine learning, statistical data analysis, and data mining. Uh, then city-based support vector machines for classification and a new hierarchical clustering algorithm are among us her many publications. After completing her PhD in January 2019, she started her career as an assistant professor at Kabul Polytechnic University, Afghanistan. Later that year, she also became the director of digital skills development at the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology. In April 2020, she was appointed as the executive board member of the Afghanistan Telecom Regulatory Authority, and she continued to serve in this position until the fall of Kabul. During her time in Atra, she worked on developing a national digital agenda for Afghanistan, as well as a national digital skill development strategy to close the digital divide laws and regulations for the telecom sector. In addition to her official duties, she was the chair of the IEEE Afghanistan subsection and the chair of the Equals Afghanistan project, which aimed to help Afghan women become more digitally empowered. Uh, Ms. Zara is also the chapter ambassador of Women in Tech uh, Afghanistan. Next, um, our senior member, Nuria Rezazada, myself. Uh, so I'll be reading my own bio. So Nuria Rezazada is a Fulbright alumna is, and is the first woman to study a computing-related uh, technical degree on Fulbright scholarship from Afghanistan. She completed her master's degree in information technology, majoring in human computer interaction from Rochester Institute of Technology, New York, US. Her major involved working with projects that highlighted blended education, cognitive thinking, problem solving, and user experiences. As one of the few Afghan female professionals working in the information technology and management field, she has eight plus years of professional experience with international organizations, government, and private sector. She worked as the program manager for one of the uh, Afghanistan's key projects, Mobile Government, um, or MGOV, which was an initi uh, initiative of the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology, and um, it was funded by the World Bank. In addition to this, she also worked with another most critical project of Afghanistan, the National Electronic ID Card, during, him, during her master's internship program. In 2017, Nuria joined American University of Afghanistan and led the university's biggest scholarship program for girls, a U.S. Embassy scholarship grant program, which was more, worth more than $25 million. Previously, she worked with many other prestigious organizations, namely uh, Ustronics, uh, USAID, European Commission, Rochester Institute of Technology, and Peace Integration Process. In early 2020, Nuria was appointed as the High Council member, the highest decision-making entity of the Afghanistan Telecom Regulatory Authority. Nuria served as the panelist in Fulbright selection process, designed and developed a web application for Afghanistan Fulbright Association as her thesis project, served in the Dean's Student Advisory Board at RIT, mentored many Afghan girls in different capacities, 
specially education and Fulbright applications, volunteered in TEDx Fulbright team for many years, and was an advising member of the Equals Afghanistan, as well as a member of the IT Advising Committee at the American University of Afghanistan. Noria is currently working as adjunct instructor of information technology at the American University of Afghanistan. Um, moving on, Ms. Shabana Mansuri is another senior uh, board member of the Women in Tech Afghanistan. Ms. Shabana Mansuri has a bachelor's degree in computer science from Kabul University. She started her career in database development with, uh, with Chemonex International and later moved to becoming the chief information officer for the e-governance department of the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology of Afghanistan in 2016. Ms. Shabona co-founded Tech Women Afghanistan and is also the founder of Afghan Girls in ICT, which was focused on encouraging to bring more girls and women into the ICT field. In addition, she organized multiple Tech Women related workshops in the Internet Governance during uh, in the in the Internet Governance Forum during 2016 to 2018 in Mexico, Switzerland, and Germany. She has also worked as board member of the Internet Society in Afghanistan, where her work mainly focused towards internet governance issues, contribution, and inclusion of Afghan of women in tech. Ms. Shabana is currently studying and also volunteering with Can Canadian Women for Women Afghan for women for Afghan women and the school back project. Last but not least, our uh, uh, Marcel Dawoodi is our um, another senior board member, and uh, Ms. Dawoodi uh, uh, served as a lecturer at Kabul Polytechnic University of Afghanistan from 2010 until 2014. She completed her master's degree in informatics at the Technical University of Berlin, Germany. Upon completion of her degree, she returned to her home country with the intention of contributing to its development, particularly in the education sector, and resumed her teaching position at the Polytechnic University, where she also served as the secretary for the, of the Network and Software Engineering Department. Additionally, she was a member of the Cybersecurity Group in the IT Competence Center of Afghanistan. In September 2018, she embarked on a doctoral program to expand her knowledge and expertise and successfully obtained her doctoral degree from uh, Ryukyu's University, Japan in 2021. She then worked as a research scientist at Avignon, um, Avignon University in France for a few months. Ms. Marcel has many publications in computing and informatics and currently resides in Germany and is, is studying to enhance her German language. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to the problems. So again, uh, our chapter ambassador, Ms. Zara, already talked about the problems that we currently face uh, or Afghan women currently face. So I'm not gonna go into details for that, but I definitely would like to provide the solutions and discuss what was our motive behind creating Afghan uh, Women in Tech Afghanistan chapter. Firstly, we wanted to raise awareness and, advo and advocate Afghan women on how they can share knowledge and as well as, you know, um, uh, basically provide them good practices on how they can be involved in the tech industry. Uh, another um, a motive was supporting women through multi-stakeholder partnerships. So we would like to bring uh, partnerships and sponsors to actually help Afghan women, uh, not only in a national level, but in an international level as well. We also would like to provide the digital literacy contents uh, in different levels for the Afghan women, especially in local languages, because there is a big gap, um, you know, in having educational material in the local language, especially in the STEM field. And also, we would like to, you know, provide alternative digital educational opportunities, especially not only teaching the Afghan women on how they can socially be engaged, they can um, uh, grow and learn a tech field, but as well as how they can safely be, uh, uh, you know, working inside a tech, um, in, in a tech field. Because one of the problems that we as the Afghan women 
uh, face during our time in Afghanistan was also uh, being in a room with men and always having to stand for ourselves and always having to have our own back. So that's something that we would like to, um, you know, bring it like a culture and teach Afghan girls and women on how they can not only uh, grow in a tech field, but also support themselves and look out for themselves in a male dominant society. Um, fundraising uh, is also something that we would like to bring through Women in Tech to provide is some digital devices, especially for those in the villages and in the provinces that do not currently have access to digital devices, such as computers or mobiles or even internet. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, providing awareness to women by uh, for, for a remote job, how they can apply for remote jobs, how they can uh, build up their CVs, how they can build up their LinkedIn profile, how they can build up their um, networks and, uh, you know, take advantage of all those opportunities that are already available in the market. And as well as uh, teaching them um, jobs, tech jobs that are more trendy and are in demand. Uh, Shavana John. Thank you so much, Nuria John. And hello, everyone from around the world. And salam to everyone who is attending from Afghanistan. It's uh, really an honor to witness today the inauguration of the um, chapter. And uh, personally, um, I have always been amazed by two terms um, during my work for women and girls. One, um, the gender equality in tech, and then tech for gender equality and women empowerment. Both are like um, needed for each other, and we do need gender equality and women empowerment in tech. And we can also use tech for gender equality and women empowerment. Um, so for during uh, 2023, we have planned a number of activities that I will um, give a, a bit um, details about them. So events and webinars that we have planned for 2023. Um, the first um, event is the chapter inauguration uh, that uh, is today. And it's really um, exciting and it's really a pleasure to see um, the official launch. And um, the second event uh, that we plan is uh, Why Women in Tech? And it's planned to take place in March. And um, this uh, event is uh, planned for students of high school and universities. And uh, it will be online. And throughout this event, we will introduce um, Women in Tech Afghanistan, the goals, and also the programs and events um, that we plan for 2023. And uh, the main discussion would be what women can do in tech. Moving forward, the third event is the soft skills training program, which is uh, planned to uh, happen in May. And again, the target audience is students of high school university. It will be online throughout this event. We will provide training on soft skills and resume writing, interview preparation for girls in tech. Moving forward, the third event uh, will be a roundtable um, experts. And uh, the target audience for this event is Afghan women tech experts, and it's planned to uh, be conducted in August. And throughout this event, we will discuss the current situation in Afghanistan and the challenges, and, and um, we will um, ask for the solutions and how we can build cooperation between um, different uh, individuals, organizations to tackle these challenges. Moving forward, the third event is introduction to coding. I'm sure it's one of the interesting uh, events to so many Afghan girls, and it's planned to be conducted on October. It's again open to students of high school and university. It will be conducted online, and the main theme of this event is introduction to coding. 
And the sixth event is Take for Change. It will be um, in late this year uh, in December, and it's again open for students of high school and university. It will be conducted online. And the name is How Afghan Tech Students or Women Made a Change of Their Taliban Took Over. So it will be an opportunity for the attendees to know about the best practices and how they can use the tech in order to succeed in the current situation in Afghanistan. And last but not the least, uh, we have also considered to add introduction of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and emerging technologies um, in our strategic programming um, programs in case we find demand and also the interested um, or ideal um, audiences for this program. And uh, for 2023, we also uh, plan to conduct an educational program. Uh, by name of Social Media for Success. It will be a 3D program uh, which will focus on power of social media for learning, internet commerce, and also employment. Uh, it will be open only for members of women in tech in Afghanistan. And the goal is to introduce um, the power of social media for learning and how the um, uh, attendees can use social media in order to uh, build online businesses and how social media such as LinkedIn can be used to explore employment opportunities. Um, no doubt that during 2023, we also need to have partners in order to succeed in all these programs and in order to um, expand uh, the existing programs. So we are looking for partnership for schools, um, education institutions, NGOs, companies, employers for um, different um, aims. Uh, for our educational programs, and uh, we are looking for NGOs and also um, educational in, um, institutions and schools. And we do look for companies and employers around the world um, uh, in order to create employment opportunity, um, obviously remote, and also to help us with some of our online and physical events. We do plan to have physical events inside Afghanistan um, in case we have partnerships and also we will assess the situation and uh, we will plan for physical events as well, although majority of our events will be conducted online. And the ultimate goal is to build a community where Afghan women, uh, women are inspired and also empowered. Um, well, uh, what's next? It will be membership and events. Uh, we will announce the membership application very soon. So please stay in touch. And events, we will share the details of each event and programs through our social media uh, channels. And in our, um, if you have further questions, inquiries, you're interested to collaborate with us, um, you can get in touch through our email, Afghanistan and Women in Tech. And for our membership and also for our events, you can follow us in Facebook, Women in Tech Afghanistan, and also in LinkedIn, Women in Tech in Afghanistan. Thank you so much. And our, our goal is to let Afghan girls learn and women in tech, a global movement on a mission to empower 5 million women and girls in a STEM by 2030. And our focus is on Afghan girls and women in Afghanistan. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nuria Jan and Sharwana Jan. And it's, uh, it's been a pleasure being with all of you today. And we will announce our events and programs through social media pages. And for more information, you can contact us via email. Now uh, we will have a Q&A session. So if you have any question, please put it in the comment. We will answer. Um, I think that there is no question. So, can we just ask, like, 
Uh, what was uh, the aim to attend this event? You can just share that. What did you want to learn at today's event and why did you join today's event? Thank you, Shalom Adam. We do have one question. Mm -hmm. Please go ahead, Maria John. Yes, so the question uh, the question is what initiatives are currently in place to support and encourage women's involvement in tech in Afghanistan? Um, we have actually discussed about uh, the next steps and what are our current uh, milestone or strategic plan for this year for women in tech in Afghanistan. And by starting to implement these events one by one, um, we are hoping to have uh, to support as many Afghan women as we can, uh, starting small, but uh, we will in the future, we will have many more, you know, uh, events, uh, as well as educational programs, as well as uh, um, partnerships to support Afghan women in tech industry, not uh, only those who are outside Afghanistan, but those who are inside Afghanistan, especially in the remote areas. So, yes. Thank you. And the next question is uh, from Mahjouba. Can someone help you uh, for your events? For example, as a presenter, yes, of course, mm -hmm. uh, we will invite uh, Afghan experts, especially women, to help us. And uh, yes, we, you can you can send us your topics, and yeah, we can contact and we can schedule the events. Thank you. And, and uh, and next for, question. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to add to what you said that for our existing events, we are also looking for facilitators. So if you're interested, why not? Oh, yeah, and uh, next question is from Seth. What is next for women in tech Afghanistan? Uh, next for women in uh, tech, uh, for women in tech Afghanistan is uh, just organizing the events and also finding some sponsors because we are uh, we have many uh, Afghan women who are living in uh, poor areas and they don't have uh, digital devices, they don't have uh, internet connections. So we will find sponsors to provide them digital devices and also to provide them internet connections. Then we will have a more audience and we can help uh, more people in Afghanistan. And also um, we plan to help uh, those women who are immigrated to uh, Canada and also to uh, other countries because uh, they need uh, to learn digital skills to enter to uh, new markets in the countries. So yeah, we'll, we, we plan like this. And uh, of course we need uh, help and we need uh, your ideas. If you have any idea, please contact us via email, Afghanistan at womenintech.org. And yeah, we can collaborate. Thank you. Next question is from Ziala Momand. I have one suggestion. It would be great to have a website, at least an um, online portal to smooth the hiring participate, participants process. Uh, we, will, we will do that. And we will also announce uh, through the social media pages. Humayun Pur Muhammadi. Uh, um, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad so we, oh, we should highlight that we do have our social media pages already mm -hmm. active. So we do have uh, a LinkedIn page and a Facebook page for uh, Afghan for women in tech Afghanistan chapter. So those are already active. Yeah, and we will introduce the website soon. Uh, Humayra, <clears throat> Humayra Pur Muhammad Ali. Uh, she asked that uh, how can tech educators and academic people can help you in a STEM field? Uh, we can uh, we can have a collaboration and please contact us via Afghanistan uh, at uh, Women uh, in Tech 
www.ufcs.org. We can uh, discuss and we can start our collaborations. What about the US? Do you have any program and teams? Uh, Women in Tech Global, they have a chapter in the US, uh, but of course we will uh, cover Afghan women who are living, who are living in uh, the US and uh, yeah, uh, okay, I think questions, mm -hmm. Nuriajan, can you see any other question? Yes, Larajan, I think there was one question about uh, how uh, can I connect some of my mm -hmm. students in Afghanistan with your program to learn and to help? Uh, we are planning on connecting with many students, especially in the educational programs uh, from different universities and educational centers. We, uh, you know, we, uh, we will uh, start with the centers in Afghanistan, but hopefully we will expand it to um, universities across the country, as well as also universities and uh, educational centers uh, around the globe as well to connect them uh, with the students in Afghanistan, at least uh, to have some sort of, you know, support in teaching and also mentoring for the Afghan students there. Um, another question I think was, um, yeah, we, uh, there is, yeah, sorry. Maybe, sorry, maybe we answer what about in the US? Do you have any programs and teams in here? Um, um, we should mention that our programs uh, are not only for Afghans inside uh, Afghanistan, I mean for Afghan women and girls, but Afghan girls who are also in the third countries right now and are studying or if not studying and also those who are in other countries because our team um, members are like working from around the world. So our programs are open for Afghan girls and women, whether in Afghanistan or outside Afghanistan. Um, if it's US or UK or Europe, any other country, so it's open for all. And uh, we have other question. Do you have any programs in Italy? Uh, our program will be in English. So uh, anyone, uh, not only Afghans, anyone, if they are interested, they can join. And But I'm not sure about the Women in Tech Global. I'm not sure if they have a, a chapter for Italy, but uh, you can are interested you can join our programs too uh, Zarajan, one of the uh, i think one of uh, one important question we have here is how can people outside of afghanistan support your work uh sky if i'm pronouncing your name correct or oh, we would love to have the support from people outside afghanistan for sure uh you can contribute um as much as you can uh, by, you know, supporting our programs, uh, being um, actively engaged and involved in um, attending our programs, as well as, you know, providing your feedback on how we can improve uh, the events and how we can um, provide further educational opportunities for Afghan uh in Afghanistan. So your help would be much appreciated in any capacity. Please stay, uh, get in touch with the team if you would like. Okay, do you see any other questions? Okay, I think uh, we can end the session. Again, it's been a pleasure being with all of you today and thank you for joining us. And Professor Lale, uh, do you have anything to add? If you have, you can add this. Okay. okay. No, yeah, very nice meeting everyone and thank you for attending. Good thank luck you. to the Women in Tech Afghanistan chapter. Thank you very much, thank you very much. And uh, thank you all for your patience, patience, and I wish you all a very good evening or a good day. And thank you. Have a good day.